everybody. Hi, Daddy. Hi, Daddy. Welcome to our channel. My name is Sam. My name is Ryan. And this is a Wednesday video. Wednesday video. It's a video that you're watching on a Wednesday, and it's really fun for everyone involved. What else do you need to know? Nothing. Today, we are going to be reacting to some musical theater fails. Oh. I will say, these are some of my favorite videos to come across on TikTok. As someone who has been a part of so many <laughs> musical theater fails in my life, I just want everyone to know that these are indeed all in good fun. And yes. also, in my experience, every time I have caused an epic disaster on stage, considering that no one gets hurt, yeah. it's always fun and good. Like, everyone yeah. is always laughing. It's always just like, oh my God, I can't believe that happened. Like, it's never this like super embarrassing, terrible moment for anyone. I just feel like that's a nice preface to set the tone. Totally. Like, we're not trying to dox anyone or make fun of anyone. This is all in good fun. And I promise, in the spirit of fairness, at the end of this video, I will show you one of my own musical theater fails as a, uh, as a way to balance the scales. I love that. Yeah. So of course I took to YouTube to find some mwah, musical theater fails. Big shout out to Carter Henley on YouTube for this brilliant compilation. Good job, Carter. Good job, Carter. Carter, your daddy. Your daddy. Here's the first one. I will say I've seen this one and it's a personal favorite of mine. Okay. Get ready. So it's only funny because she lands right on the beat. It lives rent free in my brain. Woof, Sam. Kickball change, she said. <sighs> Been there, I have fallen on stage. Actually, fun story, my first show ever when I was eight years old. Yeah. It was an original musical called Christmas Schooner about a boat that brought Christmas trees to people in Chicago, riveting. And there was a number in it called Loving Sons where I was talking about how much I love my mom and I'd do anything for her. And there was this whole like dance sequence with a broom and I was eight and I'm like doing Loving Sons and I'm like sweeping and then I just fall flat on my face and the entire audience is like <gasps> And I just like got back up and was like Loving Sons. Oh. Mortifying. Yeah. So. Oh, I can't imagine. I get it. Not fun to fall on stage. <laughs> Sorry, girl. Sorry. Hope you're okay. Next, we're going over to Frozen at Disneyland. Elsa has an iconic dress change in the animated film, but it's animated. On Broadway stage, it's phenomenal. Like, it's so satisfying to see happen because it goes so fast, but they do it in another way at Disneyland. And so this is from the, the Frozen at the Hyperion that Disneyland had? Yes, Okay. it is. I love me some costume changes. And I'm sure this one is just gonna go without a hitch. Go smoothly. Oh, my heart hurts. I mean, she nailed it. She stayed she... on, like she didn't, you know, she just made it work. Show must go on. but. The fact that it's one of those where it's it's a dress on a dress that folds out this way and the fact that you like see it coming out of her. Well, and it's also funny because when I saw this show, I didn't fully notice how like bulky the chest is. Right. At first. Because the whole dress is Because in there. that's where the entire Elsa dress is. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> It's just seeing it slowly <laughs> spill out. She did a great maneuver by turning around so sure she enough, could pull yep, it out. Yep. She, she, she saved it. But yeah, I love me a good costume change fail. This sort of thing is new. You know, I, I think The Witch and Into the Woods, it's sort of just like a, a whole overpiece and then you just shed it and it's done. It's not like this sort of contraption where it's all part of each other. Yeah. Um, and then of course Frozen on Broadway is a whole other story, but I'm not gonna tell you uh, how that works because I'm not supposed to. I don't even know. I'm not gonna I tell you. I have no clue. It's magical though. Oh, not... so from Arendelle to Arendelle. From Arendelle to Arendelle. Okay. Here's another gem with our buddy Olaf. Is this also at the Hyperion? It is indeed. Okay. I hate when they fall. Oh. 
I need it. I need it again. When I finally... Wow. No. so bad the worst part is that whoever's recording this is sitting next to someone in the audience who goes oh, oh like oh yes you are the person who's most affected by this that like exactly geez where's your empathy for these people exactly that's what made me feel so bad about this clip is because you probably know that there were some like disneyland moms that were trying to refund their ticket Absolutely. or something because this accident happened um i will say it is horribly comedic that olaf's head falls at the end of like in some <laughs> fully melts fully yeah. melts yeah there's a part of me that really appreciates the show must go on mentality that is so on display here but there's also a part of me that hates it as a <laughs> as a musical theater actor it's just sort of like this is such a stupid like no, the show must not always go on. Like sometimes it's more important like, hey, are you okay? Can we stop and go back? I wish that that yes. was baked into the culture like, sometimes. Just stop and go back. Just hit the lights, reset. I also think that if a really bad accident happens on stage, not that it is in any way about the audience, but I think the way you alleviate any sort of audience members being upset is by resetting, taking care of whoever is injured, and then just starting the number over. Absolutely. During a show, like there was a fire in the basement, like oh, during a yeah. show, someone has gotten sick and they had to do a swap. Like, of course it's terrible and everyone wants to make sure everyone's safe and all of that, but like the audiences actually love it. Like the audiences mm. love when something goes wrong and they get to be a part of it and the announcement comes over and it's like, everyone stay in your seats, we'll resume in five minutes. Like the audience actually loves that. Yeah. Like. I don't know, this is com uh, completely tangential <laughs> yeah. to this video, but you you can't show a feeder queen that a feeder <laughs> fails without me like getting all up in my defending all of these yes. people. Yes, <laughs> no worries. Oh no, I already- You've seen this one? I ha No, but I just, if it's Peter Pan and someone's gonna be flying, no one like falls out of the sky, right? What do you mean? Oh God. All right, <laughs> here we go. What? Oh, and Peter just bailed. Yeah. I'm okay with you that. You gotta build, you gotta put the house back together. Yeah, I bet that that was the moment where they just said, cut Stop. to black, yeah, yeah, close yeah, yeah, the yeah, curtains, yeah, yeah, yeah. fix the set. Yeah. Ugh. I mean, I'm also like- I also can't really tell what happened there. But. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what happened. They didn't bolt the set down. I mean, not to victim blame, but like you can't just like put some sandbags or something. Like what's going on here? Oof. I think if you ever have a live dog in a show, you have to be open to the idea that something might go wrong. And that's how I'm gonna preface this next clip. Live dog in the show. Wizard of Oz. Oh, I was gonna guess. Oh. <laughs> Toto! Totally you come back! Dorothy! Totally you come Dorothy, I can you. The dog was okay. Okay. Was Toto supposed to be running away there? No. Oh. You could hear because she like completely diverts from the scene and is like, Toto. Right. And Auntie M is like, I have to say my monologue. And, and Dorothy's like, like, shut up, mom. Like, I need one to get my. Oh my yeah. goodness gracious. When I was in middle school, we did Annie and we had a live dog for the dog and Annie. I don't Sandy? remember. Sandy feels right. And. Dog was actually great. Never had any sort of mishaps. That's good. Yeah. This next one is a brilliant example of the show must go on. Done right. Okay. Congratulations, Ogre. You won the honor. <laughs> you didn't see that. Nice. Yes, absolutely. The improv that saves the the moment. Yeah, or makes it a moment. The improv that makes it a moment. Fully absolutely. in character. I during Scotland PA, it's it's Macbeth, but set in the 70s at 
McDonald's. That's the premise. It's a very zany musical. So I played Macbeth, and at the very end, he's he's making the first ever Big Mac, and it's like this maniacal, like I'm gonna feed you like my greatest invention, and then I'm gonna kill you, you know, officer or whatever. <laughs> and so I I make the whole burger, and the whole number is revolved around making this burger. And at the very end of the number, the burger falls onto the floor, <laughs> and I I picked up the burger and I just go. <sighs> Like you're blowing the dust off. And the audience applauded because everyone was like, yes, like that's the choice. Yeah. I felt very validated in that moment. But that's not even close to as funny as, as this. I really love when the audience and the actor are on the same page. The actor knows that it's embarrassing. The audience knows that it's embarrassing. And then there's that moment of anticipation of like, what's he gonna do? Mm -hmm. And when you do it, like, that's it was lit. so well executed. I love that. Good job, Farquaad. Now this is an example of what happens when you don't work with live animals on stage. Okay, oh, okay. Into the woods. Uh-huh, Milky White. Silence everywhere, Milky White. Not Take up a cow like, like that? Another great one. Yeah. <laughs> Another great example of exactly what we just talked about. It'll be fine. So good. Okay, so this next one, let's just watch it and see if you catch it. We'll show it to you a few times. Did you see it? Did you see it? One more time. Watch the dancers. Did you catch it? So, if you didn't catch it, right here, the girl in the green dress just falls on her face. Fully falls on her face. Now, that's terrible, and yes. it's actually like not even funny, but to me, the, the fail of this is that this was an ad that was released to the public for this production. And then later they like took it back and edited it. But this was released, it's on Theater Mania, Theater Mania. here on this clip. Like this was released to the press. Fully. It was for this press performance. Everybody saw it, they released it. And like, it's this is one of those examples of the show must go on that drives me crazy. The only way that this would get released is if the woman who fell on her face felt that she couldn't say anything. And they cut the cameras and they were like, that's the one, does everyone feel good? And everyone yeah. was just sort of like, yeah. Uh, yeah, because because the only way that that would have gotten released is if no one said anything. And that's the, Which... the part of the culture that just drives me crazy about this whole show must go on thing. Like, yeah. go again. I'm sorry that everything else about the take was perfect. Do it again. Someone it again. literally fell on her face in that take and you released it to the public to try to sell tickets. Are you <laughs> kidding me? It's crazy. Yeah, and it's also just wild because there are so many things that go into like releasing an ad. So it's like the cameraman recorded this and was like, okay, sent it off to someone else to edit it. Someone sent that to someone at Theater Mania for approval. That person uploaded it to their YouTube, YouTube channel, did a watch through of it. And everyone was just like, yeah, nothing's wrong with this. Honorable mention to the Duke or the Count or whoever that is, because his voice his is voice. stellar. Like he nailed it. Totally stellar. And didn't even flinch when he heard the sound of a body hitting the floor. Balls. <laughs> We've reached the very special moment in this video, the moment you've all been waiting for. So as I promised, we have all witnessed a lot of sort of cringy moments of people making mistakes that they couldn't help. So in the spirit of commiseration, I have one of me. During Heather's, we threw a big like Heather's prom press event for the release of the album. In the lobby of New World Stages, we did like a big, big fun <laughs> dance party. In my defense, everyone was drinking and I was wasted. <sighs> and also in my defense, because everyone was drinking, someone had spilled liquid on the floor. Uh -oh. And you will see me point <laughs> to the liquid and say avoid this area. But I'm dancing and I totally wipe out and uh, this is that. <laughs> 
Also, JD wasn't in Big Fun, right? No. They just said, throw him in there. <laughs> well, th this wasn't like a choreographed thing. It was just like, we're going to well, play Big Fun and everyone go out and dance. And they had made like a specialty cocktail for the night that was the Drano. And it was this like blue Curacao, like really strong drink. And I had had like four of them. <laughs> I go, <laughs> look. <laughs> you made a choice. You said, you know what? I'm gonna point. Safety I'm gonna first. Let people know. I said the show must not go on. Everybody, look out for this puddle. Look out! Look out for this Don't puddle. Don't fall victim to the same <laughs> thing that I did, my friends. Oh. I'm a giver. I'm a protector. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> that that video is on YouTube, so you can yeah. go find it. Enjoy. All you have to look up is. No, that's okay. <laughs> find it on your own. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you guys have a suggestion for another Wednesday video, comment it in the comments down below. As always, make sure to like, like and subscribe, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and we will see you guys on Friday. Bye, Bye Daddy.